If anyone would have asked me when I was younger what I wanted to do, like it would have been like, I would just say to my friends, I just want to be successful. I want to be successful and I want to buy my dad a Range Rover. That's all I want to do. I knew that like I needed a £10,000 minimum at like 20, 21 years old. Like where am I going to find that money? Like I said, I really didn't feel like I was risking it. Like this idea was planned out. Is it as anticipated as you thought it would be? There's so much content online that tells you that you need to leave some time for yourself or like read or, do, you know, the content out for, for women is just like not aggressive enough. Like I remember when Kim Kardashian said that, get your fucking ass up and work. And it was like total uproar. This is what it takes. You actually have to like really sacrifice and work. A lot to get too personal, but have you had any setbacks for yourself? I remember there just being like this stagnant period after where like I lost all sort of like just confidence for a minute. I have days where I'm like, I literally like don't know what I'm doing. Like the person they're gonna ask is me. And yeah. sometimes I just don't know the answers. Cool. Ready? Yep, I'm ready. Ready, cool. What is going on, people? Welcome back to the CEO Cast, the number one podcast for showcasing business entrepreneurship. Now, today, you join me with a lovely lady by the name of Amy Smell. Am I right? Yes. Yep. The founder of Odd Muse. Yep. How are you doing, Amy? I am very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. This this podcast has been filmed at 7.30, so I suppose the first question I got for you, what has a day in the life of an entrepreneur been like today? Oh, I don't know if you want to know about <laughs> my oh, day today. Everything. Let's go. Wowza. <laughs> um, I, oh my God. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe and set the bell notification to all so you never miss a single episode. This is like actually one of like the craziest like days I've ever had. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know how I made it here <laughs> right now. Yeah. Um, I've just had a very crazy day at my warehouse putting out a lot of fires. Yeah. You, you, what, what, what do you mean like? Metaphorically. Okay, yeah. Putting how out so? a lot of fires. Give me an example of a sort of fire that you just had today. Just a lot of stuff going wrong and orders going out wrong yeah. and just having to fix a lot of human error you had a launch day am i right we did a soft launch so yeah. a week before this is like a little strategy that I, I love like telling brand owners so a week before any collection i do a thing called a soft launch and mm -hmm. it is pretty much where we display the full collection and customers can basically view the full collection, see the pictures, the prices, and they have like a week to sign the wait list. Mm -hmm. um, so the collection will actually launch next week. Oh, not bad. But yeah, it just gives people like a time to really warm to the collection and plan their buy and stuff like that. Yeah, fair play. So when would that actually be released then? This time next week. So they get oh, like Okay, so days. literally a week in advance. Perfect. Mm -hmm. What else have you been up to today? Um, I have literally been at my warehouse all day. All there day. was I had the... I had a really cool day of meetings planned in London today, but it just got wiped out completely. <laughs> but that is literally the, the reality. That's of, the life of business, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's well, just uh, my fun day in London didn't work out. <laughs> well, this is where I'm going to start at, right, Amy? And you're probably thinking we're starting here already. Yeah. So yesterday I sent you over a list of questions. Yep. And you addressed one on your Instagram story. And I thought, this is really interesting. The question I asked was, you know, can anyone start a fashion brand nowadays, right? Mm. And you said, in the position you are in today right now, you said... I can't do this, which I found really interesting because you moment yesterday. Yeah. You've you've been like it's been proven to be highly successful yourself and the brand. So why is it that you say I can't do this? I think this was actually um an answer I had prepared for another one of your questions, but I think with what I'm doing currently, um I never set out for Odd Muse to be as successful as it was, mm -hmm. as it is. Um, Odd Muse is a total passion project and I never set out to be dealing with the, the scale I am now. Um, I, I always thought that I was going to get maybe 10 orders a day and live a very like great life. Like as soon as it started sort of like really working out for me, like, but it's grown in something much more than that. And, um, each time we sort of like have these crazy moments where we grow, um, I don't, I don't sit down with like an investor or have like people of like 20 years experience or whatever in like this space with a business plan to facilitate this growth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have days where I'm like, I literally like don't know what I'm doing. Like, and unfortunately I am the highest person in the business. So the person they're going to ask is me. And yeah. sometimes I just don't know the answers. Yeah. A lot of the time I just don't know the answers. I just can been going through the motions for three years, but it's working out. But I suppose that's with every single business, every single business owner, you're always finding new answers every single day. Yeah, I know that. I just wish I had maybe like a little bit more experience. <laughs> but this is what what we're doing. Old Muse is like three years old. So like maybe in 10 years time, I'll like 
I'm just I'm learning every day, so it's fine. But yes, I had a moment. Yeah, that's that's what it should be. To be fair, and I think you know, as well as having moments, it's good to have moments as well because yeah, like well, yesterday was like one of the first times I've ever gone on my story, like and sort of said like what's going on. Like I'm always sharing Odd Muse's successes, and it's just like yeah. there is like there is this massive issue that is growing pains in business. So I just had to lay it all out yesterday. <laughs> Fair enough. So for everyone watching right now who may not know what Odd Muse is, what is it exactly? So what do you Odd, represent? So Odd Muse is all about shopping slow luxury fashion. Mm -hmm. Um I actually come up with the idea when I was like 21 years old and I had just come out of uni. I had I haven't got like a good income. I'm in student debt. Um but the only thing on offer to me and my income is fast fashion, pretty little thing. We're consuming it. We're having to over consume it because like the quality just isn't lasting. It's very trend led. So yeah. I really just wanted to like convince younger women like me to just shop a little bit slower. Like if you're spending that money each week on pretty little thing, why not put it into like one piece? I'm, I'm a guy, right? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you how much do these things cost on average? How much, right, so this jacket, for example, is £145. Yeah. So a luxury brand sort of YSL blazer would be £1,500. Okay. Your mid-luxury brands, you're looking at about 300 which is still not accessible for yeah. younger women. Yeah. Um, so I really just wanted to like hit the market with something that was expensive because it like at the price it had to be, mm -hmm. but not like overcharging anyone a lot of a lot of our um well most of all of our sales are direct to consumer so we can cut out a lot of like that markup price yeah um so yeah it started with like blazers and tailoring and it still continues to be like when we're designing and when we when when we're confirming a product if it's not something that i want to wear in three years time or not something that i want to wear on, on like a weekly basis we won't go ahead with it like this blazer i'm wearing now is like the first sample i made in july 2020 no way. and i still sit here and wear it like it's my most worn piece so yeah. i think we the brand has lived out what i said like three years ago yeah to the point where this was like the first product and i wear it weekly and so do my customers well let's take it all the way back to 2020 then so what was you exactly doing in 2020 so 2020, I was working at ASOS yep. as a fashion buyers administrator. So I was sort of like doing all the admin behind the buying team. Um, and I, I mean, I loved my job. Like I thought it was, I'd studied fashion buying at uni and it was like, it was like my dream job. Like when I got that job, I just couldn't believe it. Um, but when I got there, I'd quickly learned that the, the, the novelty wore off like straight away because I just assessed the situation and there was so many girls there. Like if there was one promotion coming up, I was like fighting with maybe 400, 500 girls. Oh, seriously? Okay, and so I'm just not, I'm just not that person to like really try and stand out and like be that extracurriculum, like yeah. pick me, pick, pick me. me. Like yeah. I'm just, I just thought like, there's no way, like even just, even if I want to do the work, like my character is just not going to like fight. For, like I'm not, just not going to like, yeah. I'm just not going to like work my way up here. So when did you land on that job? In 2020 or before that? So I'd started from uni. So I think I'd started in like the 2018. Okay, okay. And I I immediately was like, within like three months, I was like, I'm, I'm learning a lot. Like I'm really enjoying it. But I'm traveling into London like two hours every day. Like, and at the end of the month, I'm left with like under a thousand pounds after travel. And I'm working so hard. Like, and I've gone through uni. All my friends have been working this whole time I'm at uni. I finally thought I was going to have like a little bit of money. And I've gone into like a low paid entry level fashion job. All fashion jobs at, at first are very, very low paid, which I like personally love to challenge as an employer. Like, I just don't know why they are that low, but... um Essentially, if you're on the buyer's team, you, you should be paid more considering you are the ones that decide. I think just what, because, and one, one thing I would say on reflection is like the experience I got was invaluable and you have to value experience as well as money. Yeah. Um, but it was just like, if I don't, if I don't use this experience, what am I going to, like, I can't be here forever. Um, so I would beg my mom, like, please just give me the money. I, Cause I would be working in a buying team. I'd see these numbers. I'd, I knew what money I needed. Mm -hmm. I knew that like I needed a 10,000 pounds minimum at like tw 20, 21 years old. Like where yeah. am I going to find that money? I would beg my mom, I would beg my mom. Like my mom doesn't have 10,000 pounds lying around. 
Um, and I'm so glad she said no, because I had to stay there for two more years, knowing that I was going to start a brand. But that's the thing. I knew I was starting a brand. I would skip to work every day, like, right, okay, I know, right, this will work, this will work, this will work. And yeah, the the experience I had there was invaluable. Yeah, I was going to say, and the beauty on your mum saying no is also the fact that you got two more years extra experience, which you yeah, wouldn't have had if I'm, you had that £10,000. Honestly, and- if my mum, if I would have like some way got that money sooner, I don't think I'd be like sitting here today. Mm. Really, truly, I don't think I would be. Yeah, I want to touch on your upbringing then. You spoke about your mum there. So what was it like for little Amy growing up? This episode is sponsored by Fireway Pizza, the fastest growing pizza company in the UK. With over 100 locations, you definitely have a store near you. The founder of Fireway was on the show not too long ago, and you can get a slice of the action by using the discount code CEOCAST at fireway.co.uk. Once again, use the discount code CEOCAST at fireway.co.uk. So growing up, very just normal family. Um, but in terms of like how I was like trying to like find my way and what I want to do is um, I was very, very enterprising when I was younger. Um, my dad would always just say to me, like I say to everyone, like, I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know when, but she's either going to end up running the country or we're all going to be working for her. Like, I don't know how. He wasn't saying it from a point of view where he thought I was overly intelligent. Yeah. He just knew I just had this sort of like in me. And if anyone would have asked me when I was younger what I wanted to do, like before I even knew I wanted to go into like fashion buying, it would have been like, I would just say to my friends, I just want to be successful. Okay. Is I, okay, I yeah. would say to my friends, like, I want to be successful and I want to buy my dad a Range Rover. That's all I want to do. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but that's what's going to happen. And I just loved putting outfits together. And I didn't really like when you're younger, you think fashion is just like sort of like these big time fashion designers that really sort of intricately draw. And and they're like, it's sort of like the same level as saying like, you want to be a spaceman when you're older. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It just seemed like that bit out of reach. And then what a close family friend of mine is actually a fashion buyer. And like, I remember about the age of like 14, I sort of like learned about what he was doing and... I was like, this is like everything I love about like business and numbers and like that sort of like entrepreneurial side, but it's also fashion. And Mm -hmm. it's like the logistics behind fashion, which I found really, really interesting. Um, So that got me into buying um, and then buying got me into wanting a brand, but I really don't know how I would have been able to do this without the experience in buying. I would say to anyone who's starting a fashion brand, go get experience in buying 100% more so than design, more so than anything else, more so than marketing, got to get into buying. Why? What do you think the importance is of that? Because you just learn that if a product's not working, you don't take it personal. It's like, okay, the customer didn't like this. What didn't she like about it? Mm -hmm. We need to change this. And like this product isn't marketable because it hasn't got a USP. Like if I would have just come out with a blazer that didn't have this swanky sleeve and didn't have a belt, like multiple belts to go with it, if it was just like a normal shaped jacket, it wouldn't have done well. But from a buyer's point of view that you know that, you know that you're not going to compete with, you accept the reality that you're not going to compete with these brands so do something different um, and you also learn the actual numbers like where this product is coming from the how much it's costing how many you need like to buy like what profit margin you need like to actually I was able to scale my business very quickly because my profit margin was like there I, everything was like there down to a T um, yeah it was like it was the idea before I launched was like perfected because of the experience in ASOS and obviously my mum just not sort of budging on that investment <laughs> thanks mum <laughs> <laughs> so going going to that what you just said there right you know mm. margins and all that sort of stuff so even before you had started your own brand you had an understanding like a, probably a huge understanding for you know profits margin how much of things are costing where to get them from quantities everything mm. yep so essentially you pretty much had the business experience already yeah well, and this like, is your first business yeah <laughs> which is incredible in itself because essentially you didn't invest any money into ASOS but yet you've come out with a whole lot of experience to run your That's own business. That's why I just think experience is so valuable. Yeah. And it feels like I remember being that 21 year old at ASOS and just thinking like, oh, this is going to be the death of me. Yeah. Especially when it's winter in London and you leave work in the pitch flat dark and you leave for work in the pitch flat dark and it's, it just feels, but it's just, you you got to keep going. You, if, you're, if you're in a fashion job and you know you're going to start a brand one day, if you're in any job and you know it's credit into what you want to do one day, you just have to skip to work every day and yeah. really put into just have to grind and see the vision at the end 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and coming back from London, you know, in the winters and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. By the time you get home, it's cold, wet, Waiting for raining. that four tubes to go by before Literally, you finally get on. Yeah, oh my God, I remember that nightmare. That was the worst. And then But you've got to go through it. It teaches you, even like that commute up to London, like it just teaches you like, you. these are just things you have to do in life. Yeah, it's the experience, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that £10,000, right? And that mm-hmm. two years. So in that two years, now that you have the idea of odd music in your head, mm-hmm. what is it that you were doing? On a daily basis, I want to talk about like your work routine and that vision of your own brand in your head, even though you had been working there for two years extra. So I basically would, I remember I would get into ASOS like two hours before. You can ask anyone who worked with me at ASOS, they would get in ready for nine and I would have been there already for two hours, like on my laptop planning. And it took so, I remember it took so long to think of a name. I knew I, had, I started from the very beginning and I was like, and I'm not moving on to the next thing mm-hmm. until like the first bit, until the bit before is amazing. So it took me ages, what can I call this brand? What can I call this brand? What can I call this brand? And I would skip between like, okay, what is the message? What is the message? What is the message? I knew the message. I just had to like put it in to a way that I could explain it to people. Um, and it was just train rides after train rides, what is the name? Finally got to Odd Muse. And then I would sort of like move on to like, what is the product? Like what is going to be my best selling product? What is this viral product? What is it going to be? And I knew I wanted it to be a blazer because the message was sort of you need to wear it, you want to wear it every day. What do people wear every day? Like, especially at work, I was wearing a blazer every day. Mm-hmm. Knew I wanted, wanted it to be a blazer. So I spent ages like doing this design. And even when I worked at ASOS, I still put like a little bit of money into sampling. So mm-hmm. like sampling, for example, it can it costs about £100 to get a sample made. So I was still like doing little bits here and there to like get the product made and get samples done. Because the longest part of it is is like the production of the yeah, product. Of course, and yeah, the, the, getting you know, it perfect. Yeah, and getting the right. product perfect. So that's what I was sort of like doing at ASOS a lot. And then I was just sort of like planning how much money it was going to cost me, to be totally honest. And the main thing, the main thing was the actual money. And I remember when... Uh, in them two from them two years being at ASOS I was like okay I'm not going to be able to save this money with this job I get under a thousand pound a month after travel like how am I going to save ten thousand pounds for a fashion brand so I'd basically it's not easy to save money either not easy to save money either and I was doing my bit like I was sacrificing I wasn't going out like I, I was like like I was doing my bit but it still wasn't kind of it um So I basically, and this is why my dad thinks I'm like some sort of evil genius, but I basically just started my own marketing company and there was loads of people locally with businesses and I would do like restaurant menus. I would do, I knew how to design a coat on Illustrator. So why would I not know how to make a restaurant menu? So I'd make restaurant menus. I would make brochures for like trade companies locally um hotels like I was just like I was doing people's social media and I remember there was like one month before I quit ASOS and I had earned like six thousand pounds that month is it yeah okay yeah that's a lot and I was like right okay I'm starting my brand and I've got a bit of passive income going on here like even if I cut this in half like I can earn more than what I'm earning at ASOS yeah and I will have that freedom so how long did the marketing brand go for I did it for about I did it for about three years. Oh, is it? okay. So yeah, when I first started Odd Muse, I was doing both. Yeah. Because one thing I would say as well, like growing Odd Muse, one thing that took the pressure off, but also made me like super willing to take all these risks, was because I did create my own passive income. So I didn't like when Odd Muse was see like seeing the first couple of sales, I didn't need that money for myself. Like I was doing my restaurant menus and I was doing all that. Yeah. So I I had that passive income coming in. So like everything up until like literally like year two like everything was going back in I wasn't taking a penny everything like the first person who worked for me saw more money out of Odd Muse before I did so that that was like yeah I was really like I really was just putting everything back into it now this is such an interesting point because obviously I didn't notice this thing about you at all right so earning that passive money and having the marketing this marketing company is a little bit random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But marketing it, it funded Odd Muse. It's random, but it's also making money at the same time. Now, you can either be one of two people, right? Well, you've got yourself here, which, you know, uses all that money and invests in what they initially wanted to do in the first place, mm. yeah, which is start your own brand. Yeah. Or you can have another person who thinks, you know what, this money's good and I can still live a good life. And eventually I can buy my dad that Range Rover. Do you know what I mean? With, mm. with the marketing company. So did that ever come in your head? Thinking maybe I should just sit on this marketing company and scale that uh no because 
to 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 money doesn't mean as much to me as being able to like live my dream like I would if if the marketing company was giving me like more money than odd muse like I would still do odd muse mm. because for me it's like living my passion every day it's you, not about money you love and job. that like links back to like when I said at the beginning about sort of like sometimes I struggle with like you know I didn't set out to have like this huge business and like how much it scaled but yeah because just the foundations of just like being a fashion designer and people wearing my clothes and meeting people is like so much more valuable than than my marketing company was yeah so talk to me about that time when you actually you know you had left asos now Mm -hmm. and you've actually officially started on muse okay how was that period for you um it was really really nerve-wracking because but i'd say i'm a lot more sort of like outspoken now but before i left odd muse uh, left asos I was just like incredibly shy. Um, like the the mental prep that went into even like telling people about odd news and like doing that first post was like so much. Like Did you tell just, your friends or anything before? I told like I I don't like I have like two best best friends and they they knew um, of course and like family and stuff. But like Loki, everyone thought I was crazy. Like I've just like quit my job to start my own fashion brand. Um, so I've forgotten the question. Did, um, how was that period for you basically when you first started? So, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so when I, I, do you know what? I pretty much took it seriously straight away. Like the stock come to my house and my dad was cooking dinner and I was like, right, my clothes can't smell of what you're cooking for dinner. <laughs> I need to get, I need to get a little place for my, I need to get a stock room. <laughs> you need to find somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, so before I even had one sow, I got yeah. myself a stock room. I got a little self-storage unit. Yeah. And I hung, I like, hung them all up Um. And then we ended up moving to, like, within, like, the first couple of weeks, we ended up moving to, like, the biggest storage unit they had. Um, so I took, I took it very, very seriously. Like, my mum was like, you're going you're gonna to get an expense already? Like, you've not even, like, had a sale. And I'm just like, no, it's fine. Like, I know this is going to work. Was this like, all part of the 10 grand that you invested initially? Mm, That's yep. crazy. That's crazy. So I think I definitely went. A, I definitely went a little bit over because there was like in the prep, like sampling and stuff, the little hundred pounds here and there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that, trying that to definitely. I didn't. I didn't sort of count that, but yeah, it was around. It was around ten to eleven thousand pounds. What about your first sale then? My first sale. Um, How long did that? My take? first sale was. Uh, do you know what? We did pretty well straight away. I think my first day, I saw about five orders. On the first day? Yeah. Okay. But three of them were my friends, okay, which yeah. is just lovely. Yeah. Um, and two of them were like fairly local people. So it was just sort of like very small, like a couple of people who maybe knew about me from like just locally yeah, had, yeah, yeah. had wanted to buy the blazer. That Amy started on brand less support. Yeah. But it was sort of like, it was actually um, within the first month this is like the craziest story and still to this day, like I can never get over it. So when I first started the brand, everyone would go to me, who do you want to wear your brand? Like, who do you want? Like Kim Kardashian, Hayley Bieber, like all these big people all like in America. And I'd be like, no, I really want this influencer called Lorna Lux to wear it because I followed her for so long and she's not this normal, she's just not a normal influencer. She's genuinely just like living a really fab life mm-hmm. and she wears really cool clothes. Um. And just by chance, she bought the blazer. No way. Yep. And you didn't DM her to send her one or anything like that. She just she bought the blazer, and I wish I had my old phone because there's a there's a let me guess there's a voice screen. Yeah, yeah screaming. Josh come home. My boyfriend come home one day. What's happened? What's happened? Like are you okay? I could not get my words out. And Lorna had posted on her story like I've just bought this blazer. Like I've just discovered this brand. It's coming tomorrow. Brilliant. Yeah. And I'd sold out all the blazers that I had and made ten thousand pounds that day. From her basically. From her posting. And because like if she wasn't paid or gifted, everyone just thought, oh wow, she's bought like it it converts so much more when like people authentically like the product. And yeah. that is a strategy I've carried on throughout the whole business. Like I don't like tend to like pay people to wear my clothes or anything like that. Like I'm not bothered, just wear it if you want to wear it. And yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Like Authentic something. Authentic growth, more, isn't it? Yeah. So and it was so funny because when with when you start a fashion brand, like when you like make clothing, you have to buy you have to buy fifty of everything. Oh, is it okay? And I that's like the minimum order. Yeah, okay. minimum order quantity. And I said, this I know I'm going to sell a hundred of these jackets. So yeah. the blazer was the only thing I ordered a hundred of, and we sold them like instantly. Like the day Lorna posted, we sold like ninety five units. I had my five the first day, and then all of a sudden ninety five was sold. Yeah. 
And then I was like, but like from a buy-in perspective, I was like, I am not letting this moment go. Like I need to, like all these, there's 700 people that want this jacket. I need to get this jacket to them. So I, and I knew that they wouldn't wait because like even back then, like with TikTok now, like everything is like people's patience is like three seconds. Yeah. Like they'll see that they'll see a new thing they want. So I was like, I need to strike now. So I ordered 700 units from my supplier. I did not have the money for this. I would find it though, whether or not I needed it. Um, but then I just thought, I, I'm going to risk these. I'm going to risk ordering and paying for these 700 units. And like, what if in four weeks people don't want them? So what I did was I set up a pre-order. So I sent it out to everyone and I said, look, you can you can buy the product now and it'll be with you in four weeks. So it suited the, the demand then, yeah. but it also meant that I saw that revenue and was able to pay my suppliers with it. And that is truly the reason why we got a hundred um, thousand pound in sales in the first three months. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I never had the the cash at the time to invest in that stock that I needed. And we've continued that strategy throughout because it's just allowed us to scout with no investor, but also it's, it keeps us like, I always, I don't want to ever be left with waste product. Like it's so hard to be sustainable nowadays, but like I, we, it's technically low, it's low impact production. Like I'm never ordering more than what I need. Like I'll order, it sells out and then we go into pre-order and only order what we need. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like this really unique model, which I really find struggle to like, if people ask me about it, I really struggle to like communicate like how they can do it. Like it's just something that's worked out really well for Obnews. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that is what to this day has allowed me to scale the business without role remaining like a hundred percent self-funded. Do you know what I think is the other thing that's, you know, so sick about the whole pre-order system yet mm. is that as someone who's pre-ordering, it kind of help, uh, helps with, you know, hype anticipation. Like you're excited. Oh yeah, You've definitely. You've given them the money 100%. and now you just can't wait to get this. And 100%. when you get it, you feel happy. Like, yeah, amazing. and like, te like as a customer, I can understand there's a reluctance around pre-ordering, but we have made it such a norm in Odd Muse. Like if you're like with our launches, if you're not online for like 9 a.m. when we go live, yeah, you will go real. into a pre-order. Yeah. Like you you will because we always uh, we always like sell out within the first sort of like 10 minutes. So yeah. if you're not online, customers are expecting to go into a pre-order. That's crazy. Um. So yeah. It's, it's, it's just like my sister. I mean, I don't shop online much, but every single day there's a package <laughs> that comes to the door yeah. from her. And she'll even be on like the Adidas app trying to order. She'll be in the queue for the Yeezys yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. She's like literally on you've the got, game like you've that. Got to, you've got to create demand. Yeah. I think women are more on it online shopping than, than men, to be yeah, fair, that's which, fair enough. which is crazy. That's fair enough. So now after the three months, 100 grand, which is, you know, like I said, congratulations to you because that is actually immense, especially for a startup brand. That's that's mm -hmm. crazy. That's Some people don't even see them figures after a whole year. This episode is sponsored by Sun & Musk, the UK's leading fragrance brand specializing in ouds and musks. They have some of the longest lasting perfumes you can try and with over 20 locations, you can certainly smell it for yourself. And you can also check out Sun & Musk online by visiting www.sunandmusk.com and checking out the wide range that they have to offer. I personally use Abed Ombre, but I'm sure you'll find a perfume that fits you. So make sure you come down to a Sun & Musk store or check out the website using the link in the description. So for you to that in the first three months. I think the day that I put that, um, the day I put that pre-order live, um, them 700 units, we took like 58,000 pounds just that day. That's crazy. And I remember like sitting there with my iPad on Josh's mum, like my boyfriend's mum and dad's stairs, like looking yeah. at my iPad, like I've just made 58,000 pounds. Like what the hell? And yeah. the stock's being made at the moment. Like, ASOS, that would have taken you, what, three years? Yeah. If, I was know. like, what is going on? But then we've just continued it. And now, now honestly, like our last launch day, we reached like 230K on the first day. Yeah. When did you have that surreal moment of thinking, oh my God, this brand is going to be a success. This is going to work. Um, honestly, when I, when I sold them 95 units, okay. so I was there, like, then. right, I know what I've got to do here. I'm taking it seriously and I'm going to go crazy and I spent every single penny back into the business for the first like over two years just trying everything making mistakes um so yeah <laughs> on that way crazy. along that journey <laughs> I'm sure it was probably wasn't all you know happy days mm -mm. right so no. can you talk to me about some of like the stress only like this had? only this year have I been able to actually like I'd say deal with it in like a much more mature manner and not and just be like a bit like you know okay 
this is what's happened. This is how we're going to deal with it. Yeah. Um, I've all up until like six months ago, I've always really, really struggled because it's again, just not having that business plan behind this growth that I never anticipated. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, a lot, a lot of tears, a lot of problems within not like not having enough people, not having the right people, not ever setting out to be a manager or managing people. Like there's just so much that you don't think goes into a fashion brand that actually goes into every single business like people mm -hmm. and just space and, and warehouses and offices and just... There's so much that goes into it. There's so much that goes into like just business, like whether it's a fashion brand or not. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think just constantly like being presented with like, of course, oh, of course I need to hire someone. I mean, the before I literally drove myself insane before I finally hired someone. Um, and then I just sort of like started growing the team, growing the team, growing the team, like not worrying necessarily whether we needed that person thinking like we will need that person in six months. So let's get them now. Yeah. How long was that until you, from when you started to when you hired the first person? Um, probably like six months. Okay. So you were running it, a, a, you know, a while yeah. for yourself. Then. Do you know what? Maybe longer than that. I think I hired my, I think I started in the September and I hired someone in like the May. So quite a long time. So all of them orders, all of them 700 orders and pre-orders, you done that all yourself? Well, yeah, I had I had to have some help. We had, yeah, I had a lot of help. Friends, family, we were all down there. And I'm, I'm and assuming- And still like last Christmas just gone, like friends, family, or we're all we're all down there. All because, come and help out. Yeah, because it's just like, it just goes back to the point where I just like, I can't facilitate this growth and it's like the best and worst problems. And I'm really lucky that like, People like love coming down to pack orders and helping out. Like I'm really lucky. You know, with the growth, do you ever think about a time where, you know, not so much as an investor because you've got the whole pre-order model system there, right? But more so someone coming on board to take it to that next level. You know, if you look at the likes of maybe Gymshark or what Lewis Morgan's do now doing with Able, mm. you know, they're reaching new heights and insane heights. But because they have, you know, people invested in the business yeah. that have such high up knowledge experience. Yeah. And obviously, like, lots of cash, lots of experience. Exactly that. Um, I've thought about it, but the thing is, like, I am so stubborn. Like, I, I truly believe, like, I'm on this journey and I'm going to be, like, one of them people that people's people that goes into other brands and scours them. Like, yeah. I, I'm, Odd Muse is, like, 100% my testimonial. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but, I mean, but I know, I know, I look into it all the time. Like, I know, I know like, like, Gymshark is, like, crazy like their numbers are crazy um but yeah um, i mean i'm still we're still we're just we're not we're two and a half years in yeah it's still that's what i'm saying it's still early but you still have had so much success in that time how's it at this point right now how do you feel with where you've come um i feel i feel really proud of what we've achieved like i've not i would have never like i said i would never ever ever set out to you should be proud have of it, it, like it's just it's insane but then i sit we have these meetings now and it's like i know ex we know exactly what we're doing like all of a sudden we just we the product is like so amazing the connection with our customer like we just work so hard and yeah the 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 growth for us is like I just feel like it's almost like guaranteed, like what we're doing like this Christmas, like from lessons learned last Christmas and like expanding the product range and just everything we're doing. Like I know how insane, I know like this is just the beginning. How far soon are you planning? Like first, like for example, right now, what are you designing for? Like So I just ahead? started designing next summer, oh, very next early summer. stages. Okay. So I like will start with like my concept and um various sketches and then i sort of like present to the team and then we like get the product and here's the thing i really want to figure out yeah because women's fashion changes so fast mm -hmm. men's fashion changes fast but women's fashion there's always a new trend or is always a new something that women want right mm -hmm. so how can you anticipate and and know what to create for the next summer coming so this is where my like usp really suits me because the whole point is it's seasonless fashion okay. and it doesn't date it's it's not trend it's it's just something that you are gonna i, I would always say at the beginning like this for, for women this is stuff that you're gonna want to pass yeah. down to your daughter it's and, not like, fast fashion then at all. it's not fast fashion at all and it's not it's not trend led it's very much we use like the same fabrics the same colors but we just like work on like really key shapes really timeless shapes um and yeah, so I feel like my, our designs do stand the test of time 100%. So invest in that initial £10,000 into your brand. Mm -hmm. And you, as you said, 
all your life savings at that point. 21 right? years old. 21 years old. Did Maybe that... want to move out one day. Exactly. Did that not want to scare you? Um, I would say because I had put, I'd worked so hard for that £10,000 and I just, I felt like the experience I had at ASOS, like the time, everything I put into the brand, I just felt like I de-risked it all. Like I really didn't think it was going to foul. Like, and I also like, I wasn't scared. I just wasn't scared to lose it. Like you can't be scared to lose it. But from a buyer's perspective, I saw how much I was selling the product for. I saw how much it was costing me. And I just said to my mum, if it doesn't work out, I'm going to sell it all cost price. I might get £7,000 back. I might, I'll get something back. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, and I just, in my head, I was like, it's, I really believed in it. I suppose the self-belief for you overpowered the risk all day yeah, long. Yeah, and also like the the fear of just like staying in a situation I wasn't happy with, like was the main reason like I didn't I didn't want to be at ASOS anymore like mm. I'd I'd got to a point where I was like I've learned I feel like I'm I'm ready and I've learned what I need now I need to like learn as I go in my own brand and you know we were we, me and you were speaking on whatsapp for a while as well right mm-hmm. and you mentioned there that you know you had helped and you've spoken to other business owners who want or maybe women who want to start their own business mm. but they're too scared to put in that capital in the beginning yeah so I feel like women in general are just like have a lot more fear around sort of like really putting money into stuff and mm. like investing and it is just it is just a reality and I feel like I don't know like when I feel like there's a lot of sort of like what am I trying to say I feel like when you sort of watch that podcast for yours of yours for example and you see like these men like really sort of like you know just talking about like how much money it takes and what it takes and women just don't have that like online available like unfortunately it does take risk that is going to really really scare you and you can't worry too much about money that you're saving you have to worry way more about the money that you can make yeah this is why i really really wanted to get you on because i think you are like literally the perfect representation for women who are watching this right now and want to start their own business Mm. because you're self-funded you own it all yourself and you've scaled scaled it to this level and you've had no fear of that initial investment no. you know i speak to a few girls here and there who have ideas to start their own business but they're always like but this but that but the thing is women are like like i don't women are just like generally like so organized and so well thought out like yeah. way more and, than guys are and like they worry way more so like you're in the best position to like put your money into something you really believe in right yeah yeah um so yeah but well, then it comes down to that fear factor and the risk and everything oh my god it's so it's so scary but i mean the main thing is like i didn't just like have ten thousand pounds and be like i'm just gonna like risk it all like i said i really didn't feel like i was risking it like this idea was planned out like i wouldn't move on to the next thing until like the first bit was perfected like odd news then i moved on to the product then i moved on to the instagram and how i'm going to do it and how i'm going to present it who's going to model like all stuff like that so i really felt i just felt like it was like zero risk honestly i yeah. don't know if i was crazy to think that but i was like this isn't risky i don't think it's crazy at all because i think naturally as a business owner when you believe so much in the idea at first yeah that's and all you want to do also like again like i said i could have just sold the stock all half price or cost price and yeah. and made my money back I, right, I wasn't yeah. like just like i wasn't spending it i was investing it mm. and i didn't see like yeah i was getting stock for that money and I just really didn't feel like I was risking taking a risk, which is crazy. But So speaking of spending there, right? Mm. Obviously, you had now just invested all this money into your business at first. Mm-hmm. At what point did you start to kind of enjoy the fruits of your labor? Um, Honestly? When did you start treating yourself? Honestly, not until really this year. Not at all? My main priority was getting my dad that car. Did you get him it? Yeah. I was sick. <laughs> I got my dad that car before I even thought about saving for like moving out. Like I was 25 living at home. I was saving to get my dad a car before I was saving to get my own place. Own place. Because I just was, I just, I was just in this thing where I was like, I'm not planning on stopping. Like money comes, money goes. I want to get my mum and dad this car and then I'll start thinking about myself. And truly like I just went through that motion. Like it was just the car, the car, the car. And also as well, I am I am just genuinely like at work every day like I'm not like this sort of like CEO that enjoys like 
I'm literally like at work nine to five, like yeah. Monday to Friday. Like I don't actually have the time to spend like any money on me. And also like I always put it in my head, like what I could get in business for like a bag or something. Yeah. Which, but like I, do, I have sort of started treating myself a little bit. But one thing I would say is I don't, I don't spend near like nearly as much as like what what we make because I'm just so dedicated to like that being Odd Muse's money and taking it as far as I can go with with Odd Muse's money. I just want to touch on your dream there from when you were younger. You wanted to buy your dad a Range Rover, yeah? Mm-hmm. Did you surprise him by any chance with it or? Yeah. <laughs> How was that? That was it. Was Christmas just gone? And yeah, it was. It was. How, crazy I, I wouldn't ask how you felt you know from the dream you had set out when you were younger to now actually manifesting it and bringing it to life how did that make you feel in that moment um i like amazing just it that is like still that christmas was like the best day of my life yeah I could just imagine. like bibbing outside and like my mum and dad like <gasps> like it was just insane and that just like I bet they couldn't the thing believe is as first. well like going back to like enjoying the fruits of, of my labor and whatnot and treating myself like people around me and my family like enjoying my like my success is that's how I get the fruits of labor like that that is just so much more to me than any material item like that is truly what it's about like mm. that is I don't want anyone in my family to like worry about money like and I know any one of my family members in my position would be the exact same. Um, like I bought my mum and dad that car and my brother and sister got like a hundred quid in a Christmas card. Like <laughs> they didn't care. Like it was like my mum and dad's moment. Like so. To shine, yeah. Yeah. So that's how I enjoy. What you do, yeah. Yeah. You, you say work every single day, but um, you just come back from Paris as well, right? So Yeah, but I I literally was in Paris for 24 hours for a shoot. Seriously? What, yeah. for Odd Muse? Yeah. So how does that one work then? I just get on the train, take all the photos, do all the TikToks and come home. Literally, all yourself? <laughs> yeah, I don't like the last... I mean, I can't remember the last trip I went on that wasn't like work related. But th- these are like enjoyable work experiences. Oh, 100%. Yeah. That's why it it doesn't weigh on me. Like I I love it. Yeah. I love it. And so what is it that is so talk to me about this whole like process of so I'm guessing you'd go with like some blazers and some dresses, mm. get some TikToks. Yep. Just come straight back to London. Mm-hmm. Exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to get home. <laughs> it is work. I just want to get home. Yeah. That's not a bad way to live it. No, it's that yeah, it's fun. What's it actually like then running your own business? Three years in now. This episode is sponsored by Energy Geeks. Energy Geeks are a leading utility consultancy specializing in battling the rising prices of business utilities in the market. They specialize in the procurement of business energy contracts and their direct relationships allow them to find the most competitive prices on the market, helping you find out exactly what you want and need. They can also help facilitate the change of tenancies, sort out any billing issues you may have, or simply offer you the most transparent advice available. The list of what they could do is endless. So head to the website energygeeks.com code uk the link is on the screen right now also in the description check out and see what they can do for you are you i'm trying to i'm trying to find the right way to word it is it as anticipated anticipated as you thought it would be or is it like overrated what's it like for you what running a business yeah it's just hard it's just like it's just sacrifice but i I I like dedicate my life to this brand like, and that's it. And yeah, like I just feel like that's what it takes. And I feel like there's so much content online that tells you that you need to leave some time for yourself or like read or, do, you know, do a face mask or like the content out for, for women is just like not aggressive enough. It's like, no, you actually need to like, work really really hard like I remember when Kim Kardashian said that get your fucking ass up and work and it was like total uproar and I was like wait men say this every single day and it's like it's inspirational like she like this is what it takes like it shouldn't be like so like frowned upon when a woman says that because it's like it's the truth like yeah. you actually have to like really sacrifice and work it's exactly like when M- molly may she said it on her yeah. diary CEO. she said everyone has the same 24 hours yeah she if, got if, a ma- if a man said that it wouldn't like well i'm not i'm not like I'm, no, men, men have said it many times yeah exactly the second she said it was completely different I, yeah sure like why. there's that is, that is the reality like you you have to work i what i work so hard and i have worked so hard for the longest time mm. and i love it 
I, I've got such a strong work ethic and I love it, but it's it's just what it takes. Like it's hours. It's like I said I said I said a couple minutes ago that I work Monday to Friday nine to five. That is not the truth. Like I work twenty four seven. Yeah. Like even at night in bed, I'm making TikToks in a like for the business. Yeah, I can like, imagine. It's just it's just my life, <laughs> I but I imagine. love it. And there might be a day. I just feel like this is what my twenties are for. There might be a day where I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna get the business ready so I can, you know, just be a little bit like have a bit more time to myself. But at the moment, I, I'm i just going for it. Well, that's what they say though, isn't it? 20s, is you build it, 30s, you enjoy it, and yeah. 40s, give it down to your kids or something. Yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. that. Yeah. Do you I think, still feel like I'll be running around in my 30s, 40s. I think everyone this. as an entrepreneur naturally will never it's stop. It's literally like my baby. Like yeah. I just, even when we go back to talking about investors, like this is my baby. It's... Do you know what? It's, it's a funny one because, you know, as we speak about investors and people coming aboard and stuff, mm. it's I've had conversations as well with people and they've asked to invest in a podcast, which is probably something new for me. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, for what? Yeah. Uh, why? It's it's my baby. I, yeah. under, I understand exactly you, what you're saying. You, if you've built something from the ground up, you're emotionally attached. Yeah, and it's hard and, to let a chunk go. Yeah. And also that's one of the reasons why people connect to it so much because it's such a genuine connection between the business owner and the business. Yeah. Um, so that's been definitely been the case for Muse. Like everyone knows like I am just dedicated to this brand and there's so many people that have watched us sort of like come up yeah. from absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's authentic. I want to touch on something that's authenticity, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned earlier that, you know, you don't really, you know, pay influencers or such to wear your clothing. Mm -hmm. So with the success that it's had over the three years, how have you found it? Like how Which have you marketed I, your business? I understand like influencing and content creation is like a whole industry. And yeah. I'm really not like coming for like people who like work really hard in that industry. But there are huge corporations that can fund this industry nicely I just don't believe I, I believe if a brand doesn't want to get involved they don't have to mm -hmm. um and I don't like when I like gift people things I don't I don't send over any negotiables it's just like it's going to be in your wardrobe if you wear it wear it like don't even need to take a fit picture or tag me just if you wear it wear it and I don't know like what that has sort of done for my brand but we genuinely do get like influencers buy our brand like we sell to influencers and I just think in this world of like social media and just where it sometimes can feel so unauthentic I just can't stand the idea of paying someone to wear my clothes do you know what it is as well I think it's the nice gesture that comes with it as well because as influencers I, sp I speak to a lot of influencers on a daily basis mm. whereas everything seems like a business transaction for someone like yourself to send something with no yeah, expectation like of having them return. It, honestly, it's just a gift. It, and yeah. because our items are sort of like of a higher value, like if you're getting a £145 jacket for free, if there's the matching shorts there, that's over a £200 outfit. Genuinely, like people are quite happy to like accept like these yeah. items and for they, free. They appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and off the, so yeah, like, that's one thing I've always been it. really sort of like stuck on. And yeah. it can be soul destroying. You can you can get messages from like Maya Jama's stylist, like all Hayley Bieber's stylists and you send to them and you get nothing from it, but you just don't care. You've got to be in it to win it. Mm. Like, and you just, and I don't want anyone to see like odd news and see like hashtag ad or like think that there's any level of like inauthenticity there. Yeah, so I've, been, I've always been really strict on that. Have you had any setbacks with a business at all? Um, oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, when I talk about how like crazy I was with the spending and really believing in the brand, there was definitely a point actually probably about, I would say a year and a half ago where I was, I was spending too much money <laughs> and I was getting like, I was getting a little bit lost as to where the product needed to go. Like I was getting like a little bit happy with the designs, I started doing sequins, I started doing all these things. I did this massive party in LA, in LA, in LA with the Selling Sunset Girls. Yeah. And I remember that party costing me a fortune. Like I want to say the party cost me about 40,000 pounds. What, as, or was it almost like a launch or something? Yeah, so it was launching this this collection and it was like glittery dresses and it was like all this stuff that just wasn't odd news and was not the reason why we were successful. Mm. Um, so why do you think you were doing it then? 
I just think like I always had like the blazers in all colors selling in the background. So I constantly like had this cash to play with and I wanted to do something else other than the blazers. And I just went completely the wrong way for a, for a moment. But like I risked like, like it all, like I spent all my money like on this party and on these clothes and like, even with like that much coverage, like there was like paparazzi outside. It was like in this really like famous place called Catch in LA. Like it was like, you would have thought that like I'd set it up so that collection was going to sell out the day of yeah. and it didn't and I'd put everything into it. And Is that what you expected for it all to sell out over the first sort of day? Well, yeah, I'd hoped so. Um, but then we... Yeah, it just, it didn't really work out. And I just remember thinking, I don't remember letting it get me down too much. I remember being a little bit worried, like, okay, I'm going to have to slow it down for a minute, let Blazer sales like carry on and just build back up again. Um, I don't remember like being like in a, like, like I was worried, but I don't remember sort of like being and say like, we're going to have to close this business down. But I remember there just being like this stagnant period after where like I lost all sort of like just confidence for a minute. Like, okay, what, what, what is the brand? And then we literally just took it back to the original style, like these timeless pieces. And we started TikTok and we was reaching a lot of people on TikTok just through the blazer. Like there was, we'd sold a lot of blazers, but there was also like millions of people on TikTok that had never seen the blazer. So we was doing really well through um, blazers and our jumpsuits that have the same belt style and then Christmas last year, we launched this pearl dress, which we ended up, well, we ended up selling about 7,000 units across both colors. That's a lot. And that's what really sort of like set us up again. And it was like, oh, okay. So we, we really, really dipped at the beginning of last year. And then in the second half of last year, we made like 2 million pounds. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. So business aside, and not to get too personal, but have you had any setbacks for yourself um, mentally? Do you know? Yeah. So the way I, I would ask this is naturally as entrepreneurs, we all have times where, as you said yesterday, you had a moment where we feel maybe down or unmotivated or mm. we lose confidence in that such. How do you find yourself manage to bring that confidence back up personally and get into that self where you can motivate yourself to get in? get to the next step and get back on the ball. Do you know and be what I point. think it is the most? I think it was having a team. I think it was having to like walk into the office and like having to show up every day. And like, they're like, I can't be coming into an office like, oh, like the, like with all these like girls that are like younger than me and they're just like, this is their first jobs from uni and like I'm supposed to be in charge. Yeah. And I think like being like so deep into that forced me to like okay you're like you actually can't like you you can when you go home but you just gotta like wake up every day and just try mm -hmm. and every day I just tried and tried and tried um until we just like got back to what like product wise what got we got back to like what was actually working before and now we're just like we just implement that strategy into everything so like our resort collection that launched in May that was like five dresses all in this fabric classic shapes will never go out of style so odd muse and we gross like 240k the day that launched that's crazy and we're like we're we're constantly selling the same dresses on pre-order like they keep selling out okay we sold 4,000 units in a white pearl dress at christmas let's do a bridal collection in april mm -hmm. launch the bridal uh, in june sorry launch the bridal collection we're constantly just like okay that worked let's do this okay what did we learn here let's do this yeah it's literally just analyzing what works what doesn't yeah, work i do i do feel like that. we really really know what we're doing yeah 100%. Um, and that that dip where i didn't know what that dip where like the product was wrong and I thought all I needed was a really good PR moment, mm -hmm. like a big party to sell it, yeah. was like the biggest turning point for me. Cause it's like, no, the product just actually has to be good. Like you, you don't need to be like in LA, like doing things if the product's not good. And again, I suppose on the flip side as well, if you had paparazzi, there's good market. Like, at the oh, end of the day. it was the best experience of my life. Like, 40 grand market in there. Yeah, again. yeah. <laughs> It was the best experience of my life. It was the coolest day of my life. It taught me so much. Like I remember like turning up and there was like, I got to catch and it was like, 
odd muse everywhere and I was like oh my god and I just paid a company to do it all for me yeah and I remember thinking and there was like get images there like everyone was in front of a step and repeat that said odd muse and there was like selling sunset girls and like all these people that I followed on Instagram and I was like they're like this is my brand and I have to like talk to everyone and now like when we do like PR dinners I work the room like I work that table I'm like hello my name's Amy how are you like thank you for coming like it's literally shaped how confident I am today yeah no you can see it in the confidence you have in the success in the success that you've had you know it's only right for you to be confident and and boast about your business you deserve you know for for you to self to do that it's it's unreal (laughs) as an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. as especially as a female entrepreneur do you ever feel like there's some sort of pressure oh pressure on you every day well just because like being like a female or just I suppose so do you know why the reason why I asked this yeah is like you even said uh, off camera that you know my channel is pr- primarily men mm. so there's that side of things but there's also a lot of men business as opposed to in, in comparison to the amount of women there are in business right yeah yeah so 100%. do you ever feel yeah so do you ever feel pressure in that sense um I don't feel pressure from that I just see it as like a challenge yeah like I saw today like even coming on this podcast where like it's predominantly men like I see it as a challenge and a new perspective like I feel like a lot of men sort of like get into business like through default and they're they're not through default but their main like motive is to earn money Mm -hmm. that wasn't my motive that was I just wanted to be a fashion designer I just wanted like people to wear my clothes and I started to get like I started to sort of it started to move and I started to run with it and it's I've, I've scaled it but the general thing was I just wanted like a passion project so I think my perspective can be like a little bit different because like it's not about it was never about the money for me and that's why like I've kept so much money in the business and not spent so much money on myself because this is like this is odd news and like this is what we just this she deserves the whole all the money like and we're gonna (laughs) keep going (laughs) treat the baby yeah (laughs) it's not my money (laughs) you know every day you come into the office and you've got these girls working for you do you feel like you want to set a nice, fine example for them? Um, For a long time, I did put pressure on myself to do that. And it just showed more how much I was like trying and like it was like breaking me a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I feel I now feel like I can just be like a bit more like lighter in the office. And Yourself. Yeah, definitely. And like the the thing is with my team, like they know that like, I like I, the, what I'm trying to do like it isn't normal like even just the the pure stuff that I do just for the content is someone's full-time job but I take that content I run the Instagram I also do like stuff with all the buying team and the designing team I have meetings every week with the marketing team like I'm I'm literally trying to do like five jobs so the girl like everyone who works for me is like very sort of like mindful of that Serious question though, why do you do all those jobs? I get it, but um, like, why? What is it for you? Is you wanna you I wanna be I, involved in everything? Yeah, or? It's, I, I don't know if it's that I wanna be involved in everything. I just think Odd Muse scaled so quickly because of the personal touch, mm. and it is a it is a reflection of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at at this moment in time, I feel like it is very sort of like dependent on your your like, saying your yeah. input. So I think at the moment, like I'm in all the areas I am in because I am needed um, and I haven't set the business up just yet to be like to fully function without me. Um, And yeah, obviously there is that sort of like control freak element that comes into it as well. But I think it's just that personal touch that I do with the product and and sort of like what we say in the ads and how we talk to the customers and like what TikToks we post. And yeah, I'm the girls know I'm doing like, Five jobs, <laughs> minimum. You know, with the vast success that you've had, yeah. Mm. Do you ever get scared for what the future may hold for you? Um, no, I'm like so excited. Because if you would have told me last year when I was having that disaster, when I spent like all my money on this party, that in the last half of the year we'd gross two million, and like the next year we'd see Christmas sales we saw last year in summer, like we'd like we've we in the second quarter of this year we've beat the last quarter of last year we've beat black friday we've beat christmas which is incredible because for people who may not know 
that's like meant to be the biggest court for the whole year for yeah. all for yeah, all Yeah, and brands. it will be again for like this year, of course. So it's yeah. like if you're beating it in Q2. Yeah, that then, just says a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I don't like, a lot of people love to ask me like, what's your five-year plan? And I'm like, just to be the Beyonce brand of the fashion industry. Yeah. Like one thing I'd say is that I've definitely learned the potential this brand has and I just will not let it be capped at any less than it than it can be. 100%. Any final messages from yourself, Amy? Um, I don't really know. What do people normally say? Literally, anything, anything? you want to say, yeah. What, something inspiring or... You can say know. something inspiring. You can say it to maybe... What would you say to the younger Amy? Um, I would say to the younger Amy to... Oh God, what would I say to younger Amy? I don't actually know because like even like even what I've been through, I think it's just been like a such a shaping experience. Mm. I would say just don't doubt yourself and just go crazy, invest all that money, make all them mistakes, learn all them lessons and just go for it. You're only going to do it one way, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Amy, I want to thank you ever so much for coming on the podcast and I'm hoping we can maybe do a part two in the future. Yep. Your, your brand's so young that, you know, you've got the whole world ahead of that you yet that will be my next milestone literally it will be the next milestone I'm so excited to see where you're going to be in the future and I wish you all the best honestly thank I wish you, you all so the best much. thank, thank you, for you for coming on CEO Cross. if people want to find you on socials where can they do so um, Odd Muse London on Instagram mm -hmm. and TikTok and yourself oh myself yeah. um, <laughs> it's Amy Smell X Amy Smell X I'm going to leave all of the links in the description so you can check that out if you listen to this on Apple Podcasts and Spotify <laughs> make sure you leave a review you can pick him up it's fine <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, Amy's got a dog here. Body, mascot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave all the links in the description, so make sure you check it all out. And until then, I'll catch you on the next episode of CEO Cost. Peace. Thank you. Don't know why I've done that bit. That was a bit mad. Yeah. Lovely. Ooh, Amy, you were perfect you on that. So no nerves at all. <laughs> no nerves at all.